Hello everyone. Um, so as I told you in my email that most probably I'll be recording a lecture instead of going to class because of the unfortunate circumstances that the country is passing through. Today uh, I'm gonna cover chapter 8 and chapter 8 is about uh, inventories or inventories and cost of Good. So, so basically we're gonna uh, learn some methods to uh, calculate the cost of goods sold. So assume that we have a company called High Tech Company or Incorporation. So High Tech, you'd expect that they sell uh, laptops for example. So they sell laptops. They purchased so purchases on Jan 5th, on March 15th, then on April 30th. So all of these are purchases of inventories. July 4th, October 21st, and finally December 15th. So assume that throughout uh, the purchases uh, during 2018, so throughout 2018, this high-tech incorporation purchased six times laptops. Of course, you know that when when a retailer purchases from a wholesaler or from a, a manufacturer, the price of the purchase will vary with time, given several circumstances exchange rate, macroeconomic factors, raw materials, uh, prices, demand and supply, among others. So assume that they purchased on Jan 5th 100 laptops at $600 each. Then on March 15th, 80 laptops at 650 each. Then on April 30, 90 laptops. You know, as a matter of fact, the vast majority of the times prices go up. So on April 30th, it's at 640 laptops. There, there was a slight decline in prices over here, which is, which happens. On July 4th, 120 laptops. At Six eighty dollars. October twenty first, they purchased. The company purchased one fifty laptops at six ninety dollars. And finally, mid December, they purchased sixty laptops at seven twenty. Okay. So, in total, they purchased, um, I'm just calculating the number of laptops, 160, 600, 600 laptops. Of course, we cannot tell uh, the price for all of these because we have several layers of inventory purchases or waves so these are called these are called layers of inventory so each layer has a different price than the another okay so these 600 laptops in total these are the total purchases for 2018 now uh, the given says the beginning inventory was zero and the ending inventory was 150 laptops. So you can tell that the company sold during uh, 
2018 so the ending inventory was 150 laptops on December 31st 2018 so the company sold during 2018 600 laptops which is the total purchases minus the beginning sorry plus the beginning inventory which is zero minus the ending inventory which is 150 so they sold 450 laptops okay now our objective in this uh, chapter given that we have several layers we cannot tell these 450 that were sold this 450 came from from where from from which patches or layers of inventory we cannot we cannot know we cannot tell exactly so this is why our objective in this chapter is to introduce several methods so our objective to introduce methods for computing cost of goods sold so to tell these 450 laptops the cost of these 450 laptops that were sold is how much we need to go back to our purchases and we need to apply some of these methods to tell which batch of laptops were sold so that we can identify or compute the uh, the cost of goods sold Okay, this is crucial because, you know, in the income statement, cost of goods sold is deducted from revenues and it determines net income. So if you get this number wrong, or you calculate it wrongly, you will get a wrong earnings figure, which is a prob problematic, of course. So, uh, the, the, the four, or actually there are four methods to compute cost of goods sold. The first one is called specific identification method. So let's think about uh, a retailer that sells used cars. This retailer needs to know at the end of the year exactly which car he, sell, he sold or which cars he sold because otherwise he will be estimating the, 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 the cost wrongly and accordingly the profit wrongly. Spe specific identification means that I know exactly which laptop or which car or which um, I don't know um, uh, which mattress I, I sold. This only works for unique products. Unique products. So think about a supermarket when you are selling chocolate bars. You cannot tell exactly which chocolate bar uh, you sold, right? So you have a box, it has 30 uh, chocolate bars. You cannot tell which one you sold. Actually, they are homogeneous products, the same products, so it doesn't matter that much. But when you have unique products, like selling used cars, you need to know which car you sold at what price, so that you can estimate the revenue and the cost of goods sold properly. Now, this is the first uh, method. This method, there is nothing to teach about it. I mean, it's common sense. I cannot teach you anything about it. and you will not be asked in the exam about it because more or less it's common sense. You purchased 10 cars throughout 2018 and you sold seven of them. Now in the income statement, you need to have the revenue that you generated and the cost of goods sold for these specific seven cars. You cannot do anything else with estimating cost of goods sold. So there's nothing to teach, uh, to teach you about. You just need to know that specific identification method is used for unique products, and that's it. Now, the other one, two, three, and four, these three uh, remaining methods 
are the most important methods in this chapter. Uh, and this is what you will see in the exam eventually. Now, the second one is called the average method. And basically what we are doing, what, what, what we do in, in, the, in the average method is that we compute the average cost per one laptop out of all of these. We will do an exercise in a minute to see how, how this uh, method works. Uh, the other one is called the uh, first in, first out, or what we know as FIFO. And it simply says that the first item that came in is the first item that is sold. So when selling these 450 items, you will start counting from here. So 100, 180, 270, 390, and so we, we've reached 390 over here, so we still have 60 to reach the 450. We'll take the 60 from this layer. So we start from the beginning. This is the first in, the first in that came in the, into the warehouse is the first item that you start selling from. The other one is the last in, which is the opposite, first out, or LIFO. So last in is the first out. So to sell these 450 laptops, you start counting from here. 60, 210, 330, 410, and we're still left with 40 to reach the 450. So you'll take the 40 from this layer. So last in, the last that came into the warehouse is the first item that is released or sold. Now, we will keep this to work on and apply the three methods that needs computation, which are the average cost method, um, the FIFO, and then the LIFO, given that the specific identification has no method. Okay, so um, average cost method. So remember that what we are trying to do, objective, Compute cost of goods sold. This is the main objective in this chapter. Using the average method, the first thing you need to do is to compute the average cost per one laptop. So the average cost method compute the average cost per one laptop. How can we do this? These are the purchases. These are the number of laptops. And these are the prices or the cost. The costs per each layer of inventory. So you can simply multiply the number of laptops by the corresponding cost or price of purchase and divide all of them by the total. So Compute the average cost, average cost per one laptop is equal to 100 units multiplied by $600, and this is the first layer, plus um, 80 units multiplied by Six fifty dollars, which is the second layer. The third layer has um, ninety units multiplied by six forty dollars, plus the fourth layer one twenty units multiplied by six eighty dollars plus um, one fifty units multiplied by. Six ninety dollars, and finally, the last layer includes sixty units multiplied by the price of seven twenty, 
When I say price, I mean the price that they purchased at, which is the cost to us, the price for the wholesaler, Akid. Now, all of these divided by 600 units, which is the total. So from all of this, you will get so 100 by 600 plus 80 by 650 plus 90 by 640 plus uh, 120 multiplied by 680 150 by 690 and finally 60 multiplied by 720 divided by 600 so you will get an average cost of 663.17 dollars this is the average cost per one laptop so accordingly the cost of goods sold given or using the average cost method is equal to the number of laptops sold multiplied by the average cost so 450 laptops multiplied by 663.17 and this is equal to this is dollars again uh, $2,98,425. So the cost of goods sold using the average cost method is equal to $298,425. Now, this is using the average cost method. The other method is the first in, first out. So the first item that came into the warehouse is the first item that will be sold out. We know that we need to reach the number of 450. So we start counting from the beginning, the first N. So 100 units multiplied by $600 plus 80 units multiplied by $650 plus 90 units multiplied by $640 plus 120 units multiplied by $680. So now this is 100, 180, 270, 390. How much are we left with to reach the 450? 450 minus 390 is 60, exactly. So, plus 60 units from this layer. So, multiplied by 690. So, this one here, let me use a different color. Uh, one second. Come on. Okay, here we go. So, this one from the Jan 5th layer, this one from the March 15, this one from uh, April 30th, this one from July 4th, and finally this one, the 60, came from the 150 laptops that were purchased on October 21st. The sum of all of these is the cost of goods sold. The sum of all of these. So, 100 by 600 plus 80 by um, 650 plus 90 by 640 plus 9, 680 by 120 plus 60 multiplied by 690. So the cost of goods sold using the FIFO method is nine to nine six hundred dollars. So as you can see that the average cost method 
gave me a higher cost of goods sold than the first in first out or the FIFO method which means that the earnings figure or the net income in the income statement will be different when using different costing methods now the last method is the LIFO I'll try to make it fit on this part give me a second so just to make the comparison easier so now LIFO LIFO method in the LIFO method we will start with the items we will start with the items that entered the inventory warehouse at the end so the last in this is the last in is the first out so the first layer that uh, you start selling from so using the LIFO again we need to count up until we reach the 450 uh, laptops that were sold so we start with 60 which is this layer multiplied by 720 dollars and this is units plus 150 units multiplied by 690 dollars plus 120 units multiplied by um, 680 dollars so this is a 60 to 10 330 we still need 120 to reach the one the 450 plus 90 units multiplied by the 640 so again the same concept this layer is the December 15th layer this layer is the October 21st layer this layer is the July fourth layer and this layer is the April uh, 30th okay so 60 to 10 330 uh, 420 we still need 30 laptops right to reach the 450 so plus 30 units multiplied by the price from the March layer which is 650 so on this layer comes for, or this batch is from the March 15 layer the cost of goods sold in this case would be so 60 multiplied by 720 plus 150 multiplied by 9, 690 plus 120 multiplied by 680 plus 90 multiplied by 640 plus 30 multiplied by 650 and this will give you a cost of goods sold of 305 400 dollars so now as you can see we used three different costing methods and these three different costing methods yielded three different cost of goods sold figure so the average cost method gave us this number this is the cost of goods sold using the average cost method the cost of goods sold for the LIFO method and finally the cost of goods sold for the LIFO I think I said LIFO here for the FIFO I meant and finally for the LIFO it's 305 400 dollars so the lowest cost of goods sold is the FIFO the highest is the LIFO and the middle one is the uh, average cost method this only takes place when prices are increasing steadily so it's not a rule this is the case when prices are increasing and it makes sense because when prices are increasing in the LIFO you start, you start counting from the highest price and going backwards whereas when the 
in, in the FIFO, you start from the lowest price and you move forward. Um, this is it mainly. This is the chapter. It's a simple chapter. There's nothing to worry about. A few concepts that I need to uh, mention before I uh, uh, finish with, with this chapter is that you need to be consistent uh, when, when adopting one uh, costing method. So you cannot use uh, in 2018 FIFO and then shift to average cost in 2019 and then revert back to FIFO in 2020. You need to adopt one costing method and uh, use it throughout. Um, as you know from chapter 6, when, when we have an inventory shortage, we need to take an inventory count, and if there is a shortage, uh, we need to accommodate for that by simply uh, increasing our cost of goods sold and decreasing our inventory. So debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory. This is how we account for inventory shortages. Uh, there is one last uh, concept which is called write, when you, when you write, write down your uh, inventory. So write down inventory values. So basically in this, uh, this concept, you know, we are dealing with a high-tech company, right? So high-tech company means that if a, new, a newer version of, of the laptop you are selling was released from the mother company, it means that the existing laptops that you have will drop down in, uh, in value, right? So we need to decrease the value of, of these laptops in our stock or in our accounts. This is mainly, uh, this mainly hits the, and this concept mainly hits the uh, retailers of mobile phones. So assume that uh, you are, you are selling uh, whatever iPhone X and then iPhone 11 uh, was released so the value of the iPhone X that you have will go down right so you need to write down the value of the inventory writing down the value of the inventory is basically decreasing uh, the value of, of, of this inventory so we call it write down and we always take the lower value between the market and the cost that appears on the receipt. So assume that, um, one second. Okay, so assume that the example says, assume that you purchased um, uh, a batch of mobile phones for $150,000. On Jan 15th, 2018. Okay, so this 150,000 is the cost, right? For you, it's the cost. Now, on June 30th, the manufacturer released a newer version of the mobile phones you have. Assume that by the release date you have, you still have uh, one third of the initially, the initially 
purchased inventory شو يعني one third one third is one over three multiplied by one fifty thousand dollars so fifty thousand dollars in other words from Jan 15th till June 30th we were able to sell one hundred thousand dollars or two thirds of the mobile phones okay now on my balance sheet I have fifty thousand dollars of inventory that refers or corresponds to these mobile phones I know that after the release of the new or the newer version of these mobile phones so after the release of the newer version of the mobile phones your existing inventory lost 40% of its value okay so the it means that the market value is equal to the remaining from this 40% that went down so the the 100% minus the 40% which is the loss in the value multiplied by the $50,000 which is $30,000 so now I have two values I have this value and I have this value this is the cost which I paid for so the cost of this inventory is $50,000 and this is the market this is what my mobile phones are uh, traded at the price that they are uh, traded at, at, at uh, in, the, in the market so the rule says to write down your uh, inventory values you need you must take the lower between so lower uh, between or off one second it's called lower off lower off cost or market so you compare these two values to each other and you take the lower value this thing here is called the LCM lower of cost or market this LCM, it's similar to uh, writing down inventory, I mean, is similar to taking into account shrinkage in inventory. So you will simply increase the cost of goods sold and decrease your uh, inventory. So this is done by debiting cost of goods sold and crediting inventory by how much in order to reach this value. I need to remove 40% from my existing value. 40% from the 50,000 is the 20,000, which is the difference between the 30 and the 50. So cost of goods sold increased by 20,000, and my inventory decreased by 20,000. This is basically saying that the value of my inventory went down, and the cost of my goods sold went up, and there was no revenue in return. It was a total loss. So this is how we write down uh, the values of, of, of our inventory. Uh, this is basically everything. Uh, we might have a couple of um, concepts in, in class next time, hopefully on Thursday, hopefully. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Of course, you can send me an email with the question or you can ask me in class. Uh, I'm, I'm fine either way uh, I hope that I was able to uh, explain it uh, properly and simply smoothly uh, and I hope that tomorrow will be a better day to all of us and to our beloved country have a good day